Falcon fans, Falcon fans, Falcon fans, and of course, Falcon fans. You already know what it is. You already know what to do. One time for the fan. We are back. Episode 184. Feeling good. Feeling great. Got T. Will. Got Chase in the building here with one time for the fan. How's everybody going, T. Will? T. Will, Chase, how, how y'all doing? Doing pretty good. <laughs> doing pretty good, Jack. Glad to be here. Chase, glad to see you. And uh, yeah, man, a lot to talk about. So let's get into it. Man. Yep, yep. Chase. How you feeling? Yeah, man. Um, ready to talk some Falcon football. Uh, face is a little scarred up tonight. Um, a little accident at work, so I ignore that. I uh, was, was determining to shut the camera off for tonight, but I figured, fuck it, why not? We'll come on. Uh, ready to talk some Falcon football. A lot to talk about with the Raheem Morris interview. Um, a lot of Falcon fans want to talk about it, so let's get it. Let it rock, man. I know how it is, Chase. And I do want to apologize to everybody here on the channel uh chase did do some work today on the house and uh you know i told him uh you gotta wear his safety goggles and his hard hat but apparently chase <laughs> wants to be a warrior of uh, the ultimate warrior when he fought hogan uh chase you also have your jersey on too as well um you're not ready to talk falcons football you seem like you're ready to play some falcons football too as well man, uh, what position you playing football, tonight actually, man. Sheesh. Whatever's going to get us to the ring, though. Whatever's going to make it happen. Well, we need a cornerback, too. We need some interior defensive linemen. We need some some, some monsters up there. We're going to get it in the draft, for sure. We're definitely going to get it, man. I'm hoping everybody in the chat is feeling good, feeling great. Once again, one time for the fam. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and now with the announcement, Amazon Music Podcast too as well. So you can check us out on Amazon Podcast for those that's big into this podcast world. You can check us out on multiple channels. I always say Google us. You can find us wherever else. I mean, think there's a radio podcast or something else that we're on or a couple more. But we have Anchor. We have Spotify. We have um, um, uh, uh, Apple Podcasts. And now Amazon Podcast too as well. So for those listening and watching, thank you. We want to say we're doing the best we can to not only bring the content, but we're close to a thousand subscribers, man. And it's really, really because of you all. That's where you, you know, hit the so. um, that's where you hit the sound bar. When you hit the Shit. Well, that's coming soon. That's coming soon. Uh, but we'll just say sheesh for right <laughs> now. Uh, for those in the chat, thank you for paying attention to everything that we've been doing since day one, man, because we've been really trying to bring content and positivity to the falcons fan base chase you know that we've been doing yes, this for a while t will yes, we sir. talked about this too as well i know you're new here to the podcast but you're technically a veteran now you've probably done 100 shows in your past month of you <laughs> being with one time for the fan um t will you're, you're you're definitely uh coming up in the ranks here i must say man you, you, I, I love the falcon gear too over there too as well man you you're fresh over there brother what's, hey, what's up with that falcon gear you want to go ahead and describe the fit for the night before we get started Hey man, uh, I'm just trying to keep up with y'all, you know. Jeez, I'm, 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 I'm rocking the, the double X, you know. But I'm, I'm just trying to keep up with y'all, man. I'm trying to keep up with y'all, man. <laughs> that boy got that hoodie, that Falcon hoodie, looking clean. Hey man. Over there. Chase, you know how it is when it comes to that Falcon merch, man. We love that Falcon merch now. Hey man, so. gotta do it, gotta hey. do it. I, I, I like what you rocking, Chase. You know, I mean, I'm sorry. I always like what Chase is rocking, but I like what you rocking, Jack. I like hey, that. Man. You know, so and you know what? We we're representing all colors, red, white, and black. So I can yeah. dig it. Yeah, the Falcons are a team, especially with you know the colors and the merch that they put out. I mean, you can go to Fanatics and some of these websites. The Falcons have it. Chase, you've seen it. They got red it. and black. I mean, it goes with everything. That's the color scheme. Yeah. Bro. That's the dominant color scheme. Crazy sick color scheme. I know some people like the Viking fans. They have to rock. A purple, you have to get yeah. purple somewhere. Or that's imagine tough to do. Carolina blue, dude. Like <sighs> that's tough to do, man. Shit. Certain colors is like, ugh, can't wear it. But that red and black, and then you go to the dogs, Chase, and then you go to the dogs. It so works. it's like, come on, and, and, and the high school, and my high school team red and black. So hey, man, okay. feeling All good, right. feeling great. Falcon fans, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Uh, NFL rule changes. Chase T will, um, you heard about it. With the new uh, rule that they banned the uh, was it the hip drop tackle, uh, the tackle that's more so like around the 
uh, lower half of the body behind. I guess the mark. From, what? from right? what I took from it was like if you're if you like come off the ground and pivot your body, like you twist the opponent's waist, kind of like do. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I mean, it's kind of how all tackles happen. I don't really understand how you're going to prevent that. It's going to be a lot of penalties this season. Yeah, saw a lot of the teams. Not all the teams. Saw some players react to it on social media. Some players looking at it like this is weird. Some players looking at it, this is safe. Uh, yeah. For Falcon fans here, we have a guy named B. John Robinson on our team. Uh, so it's going to be dirty, dude. Sheesh, I hate to say it, but uh, a lot of opponents, uh, either you're getting fined or you're getting flagged, but you may not be able to tackle that man from that angle that you normally try to get B. John because he's so quick. He's so take elusive. an angle on B. John. So for some players on our team, Chase, it can help us. And then for the defensive side of the ball, it can also hurt us too as well because you don't want to be in a third and one situation, a crucial tackle that you make to stop the game or make a big play to make a turnover, however. And then the referee goes over there, beep, 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 throws a goddamn flag, right. and then there's a dog right. on. They go look at it, and then fans in the, in the stands going crazy. But I understand they're trying to make the game safer. I Team think will. initially there's going to be a lot of ambiguity. Mm -hmm. or confusion around i mean how could it not be right and there probably will be some very upset folks but i think and and correct me if i'm wrong but one of the rule changes is that well oh, i guess the well uh, you guys there they no, can go no, back no. And, and review a a, a a a penalty to see if it's valid can they not is, is that correct is, is that one of the rule yeah, changes? that was something rich mckay mentioned in an interview i watched yeah the so, assistant to the referee apparently can go over and and over call or overturn the call yeah. apparently is the rule that they have or he can go over yeah. there and discuss that yeah. if the referee makes the decision okay. of what the call is going to be then he can go over there and say hold up now hold on we we need to go ahead and second thought this real quick okay um so does, i guess that, that seems does that pertain to pat does that pertain to pass interference as well like it's is that something I'm, it seems like I mean I don't know if they want to slow the game down, but it seems like it might That's be every play. It's, it's going to slow the game down. It, is. it might it be will. every play. It will. Well, yeah. is it now? It, how frequently can it be used? Is can it be used on every call, or are there certain instances or certain parameters around it? Well, here's the cool thing. You know, we'll take a look at up. the rule. You know, we can pull it. Let's up. pull it up. <laughs> Falcon fans, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. As I am pulling this, let's go over the chat right here. Uh, Chase. QRC, what's up? QEQERC is in the chat. Before we do pull this up here and go over these uh, rule changes uh, too as well. Chase, you heard the comments from Raheem Morris uh, in the press conference that he had. Well, not really a press conference, just speaking to the yeah. media on some things. Um, but one of the things that he did mention that stood out to me is he's – very much so into the rivalry of the Falcons and the Saints, right? Yeah. Mentioning that he hates the Saints. No, he likes the Saints. No, he hates the Saints. But he does – he understands his football. So fans have their rivalry. It's a business, you know, understanding that they do treat each other with respect in the league. Um, but for him to say that uh, had Falcon fans excited about that. Chase, your thoughts on Raheem Morris mentioning uh, the rivalry of the Falcon Saints with his press conference? Well, you got to think about it, man. Atlanta is home to Raheem Morris. Uh, at, Raheem Morris was here with the Atlanta organization throughout the times where it was back to back. Falcons win and Saints win. Falcons win and Saints win. Raheem Morris was in a time that the division was really battling between Falcons and Saints. You think about it. Uh, Raheem Morris was here for the better days and the only team that was really competing with the Falcons at that time, uh, other than the Carolina Panthers in 2015, was the Saints. Uh, so there's... There's a lot of hatred there, I believe, for the Saints. Raheem Morris is Atlanta faithful, and I really think he holds a certain grudge towards the Saints. I don't think – a lot of people on Twitter, uh, you know how Twitter fans are, man. Uh, a lot of them saying that it was all show, that he's just speaking for the press. But I really think Raheem Morris, man, is is A1 to Atlanta, dude. And um, I think the season's going to be exciting. You know, we could talk about the breakfast interview. I don't know if you want to chat about that now. Is that mm -hmm. something want to talk about that? That's definitely something we're getting ready to get into uh, shortly here because our topics are going to be jumping around tonight. We got so much to go over. Falcon fans, hit the like, share, and subscribe button. Chase, Dirty Fanatics United, T-Will, we are in here talking Falcons football. So bring your questions, bring your comments to the chat. The NFL rule change, um, they, they, they did a couple. Now, you know, of course, Rich McKay being on that committee, uh, a lot of this stuff does 
kind of start and end with Rich, but you can see that the kickoffs have changed too as well. Looking to the XFL, yeah. Terry and Chase, your thoughts about the new kickoff rule in the in, in the NFL? I got one thing I want to say. I just think it's interesting. I think it's interesting that is the day that the NFL made the the, the change. The Steelers go and grab one of the best kick returners to ever do it in the game, Cordell Patterson. Uh, mm. I think that signified why that move was happening. But Terry, go ahead, give your thoughts. Uh, hey, man. I well, I do think that it anything you can do to make the game safer, um, you know, it's okay. And, and I think they're trying to, I think they're trying to bring the excitement back, right? Because there are definitely going to be some touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Anytime you have everybody stacked at the line of scrimmage, it's think of it like a run blitz. All you got to do is get past one, right? Mm-hmm. And you're you hit gone. That edge on the right side, you are pretty much, and, and you're and you're out, right? Yeah. And I think, I think they took that into account because it was really getting that. You know, there weren't any kickoffs being run yeah, back, everybody and it was wasn't fun. And and that that's a very important element of the game, right? You want to make it safe, but by the same token. You don't want to take out the things that are great about the game. I think they got this one right. I think they got this one right. So, um, you know, I mean, you know, there are going to be some gripes. Some people aren't going to like it. If my dad were still here, he probably wouldn't like it. I could hear him complaining about it. But, you know, we're trying to keep it safe. We're trying to keep youth in the game. Ultimately, I think it's a good thing. I think it's going to result in more points. I think it's going to result in more excitement. And we got Ray Ray McLeod. Yeah. So it's good for us. Yes, it's still, definitely good for us. We have a guy named Avery Williams, too, as well. Yes, we do. Yes, yes, yes we do. Absolutely. The other night, and big shout out to Scott Karisic for talking. Oh, my gosh, Scott. Uh, Chase, Terry, three hours <laughs> of Falcons football the other night with Scott Karisic. And that was great. That was great. Every moment you get ready to give a shout out and get ready to end the podcast, the <laughs> chat is still live. The chat is still lit. And that's one thing about the, the, the podcast that we love. We're going to continue bringing you know, the energy to the fan base. We're going to continue speaking with them, even when <laughs> it's getting past the latest hour in the night. We're going to still continue to talk Falcons football with them. Honestly, Terry, we could have talked another hour. Yes, Scott. we could have. If it was during the day, it would have been another hour or two more hours. Because honestly, if you look at it, we didn't even go over Grady Jarrett. We didn't go over the defensive line. We didn't go over Jesse Bates. We didn't go over Drake London. We went over a lot of things that happened that had to do with the offseason, and it took three hours. So big shout out to Scott Karisic for coming on this podcast here. Um, yeah, like thank you, Scott. Time. Thank you. Talking Falcons with them. NFL Agreed. rule change. One of the rule changes you can see right here is the kickoffs, uh, where they're going to the new XFL style, uh, where pretty much they're changing everything up now, uh, which Terry had mentioned. Now you have your guys up here, right here on the front line on both sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, which is right here uh, on the <clears throat> oh, excuse me, right here on the 35. And you have your other team, your opponent opposing team right here. Uh, getting ready to kick off, and it, it seems that <sighs> Terry, I, I like it. I like it, yeah. man. I tell hey, you what, we're gonna we're gonna find out who can work. tackle. We're, we're gonna find kick? out who can tackle real quick. How does the onside kick work? How does the onside kick work? I have even yeah. man. Chance, There's a rule change question. to the onside kick. That's a good question. Oh. You're lined up down in their in their territory. I mean, would you even chance an onside kick now? I mean, is that where you line up for the onside? Or that's, that's a, a good, good question. question. We're gonna find that's it out here shortly question. too. The hip drop tackle is now banned too as well. We talked about that uh, a couple minutes ago. That was the Mark Andrews tackle uh, that injured him um, for the season, and Rich McKay leading that wave too as well on the hip band, uh, the hip drop tackle, uh, which Rich McKay is you know. He he does a lot for the NFL Falcon fans. And, of course, you know what he's done here for Atlanta, too, as well. So big shout out to Rich McKay. Um, also, the tra- NFL trade deadline will now be one week later. Um, and they've pushed it now back to week nine. That change was proposed by uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, coaches get a third challenge. Chase, you heard about this one? I haven't. 
Coaches get a third challenge. Coaches no longer have to win their first two challenges to get a third challenge. Now they only have to win uh, one of their first two challenges to be awarded. It really seems like I mean it's it's kind of getting sad, guys. It, More it chances, seems like, baby. <laughs> it seems like the NFL is starting to realize their the refereeing is pretty terrible. And they're I mean, trying to fix it by adding yeah. football perks in a way to, you know, both teams if you, you know, get it right on your challenge, which is actually pretty cool. I mean, it might hurt some teams in a way, you know, because some teams will look at, well, they want a challenge, but they don't have no more challenges. Uh uh-uh, uh, we have a third now. I see in the comments right here, Jack, it says you have to announce when you do an onside kick now. You have to announce when you're doing an onside kick. Yeah. Oh wow! Well, I'm gonna look up the XFL. I'm gonna look up the XFL uh, onside kick changes to the replay. Here it is, right here. Uh, the replay assistant will now be allowed to correct objectively incorrect calls for intentional grounding and roughing the passer, Terry. So not on every single call, incorrect okay. calls for intentional grounding and roughing the passer. A lot of times, Chase, we have seen this on intentional grounding where both yeah. teams are arguing, both coaches are yeah. arguing, quarterbacks arguing, and the ref is like intentional grounding, and the fans are like, "What? Where is that?" You know, so this does kind of help the game for some teams. And, you know, we have a quarterback who shouldn't be in that situation this year of intentional grounding. Uh, yeah. I think Kurt does a good job of, you know, getting the ball where it needs to be. Uh, but also the replay, the replay review will be allowed when there is clear and obvious visual evidence that the game clock expired before any snap. So they're looking at the replays and I guess they're tired of, I don't know, going to New York. They just want to do shit on the field. Uh, ruling yeah. of a pass passer down by contact or out of bounds before throwing a pass are now reviewable plays. Big shout out to the NFL for what they're doing here. Uh, designated to return players during playoffs. Thanks to the rule change by the Detroit Lions, teams now have an unlimited number of designated to return transactions during the playoffs. Emergency quarterbacks, uh, I think they, already, they mentioned that the season before about having you know three quarterbacks and so forth. Uh, emergency third quarterbacks who are available to play in case of starter and the backup are ejected or injured can now be elevated from both the 53-man roster and the practice squad. Last season, emergency quarterbacks could only be elevated from the 53-man roster. So a couple rule changes, Falcon fans, that could hurt or help us this year. Uh, Still, the game that we're coming out there to play, we're coming out there to win. So with the rule changes, even without these rule changes, Chase, this Falcon team is still going to be prepared to go play football, yes or no? Oh, yeah, most of Better than they have in the past four or five years. This is great. Falco fans, hit that like, hit that share, hit that subscribe button. Marina is in the chat. She said, I highly recommend watching the Pivot interview Raheem Morris after his Rams Super Bowl win. I'm more confident than ever about him being the head coach. We going to the Super Bowl. Chase, you see a comment like this, even with, you know, us doing our homework now and going back and watching the pivot interview. I saw some of it. Need to go back and watch the full thing. Anything with the Falcons, I love watching. Right. Mm-hmm. That Kirk Cousins that Chase has shared the Kirk Cousins uh video with him and Kevin Hart um yeah. too as well. He has something else coming out that he posted on his Instagram with uh I don't know if these are two comedians or whoever these guys are, but they were throwing the football around and the football accidentally hits Kurt in the back of the head and he picks up the ball and Tells these guys he can't wait still he can't wait to see these guys in August and I guess these guys are going on tour I don't know who these uh, two guys are on Kurt Cousins Instagram but Kurt Cousins seems to be a fun quarterback man you know and uh, he's he's enjoying the moment and that's good here for Atlanta Falcon fans because it's the off season mm-hmm. right but we know Kirk is a guy that's going to get down to the nitty gritty real soon he's going to get down to business right when it gets ready to uh, get him back to a hundred percent and knowing uh, the players around him. Uh, we can definitely trust in Kurt. Marina's in the chat with the hashtag one time for the fan. Don't forget hashtag one timers, hashtag the fan club, uh, Apple Podcast, Spotify Podcast, Amazon Podcast. Uh, we are moving in the right direction. Dwayne Ruffin said, What's up, fellas? we getting Shut closer. Up. Terry, we getting closer? We're getting closer, sir. We are getting closer. And I, for one, am excited about it. I hope we can get this. Uh, Hassan Reddick trade done, and uh, hopefully we can convince Calais to come back. And uh, yeah, let's 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 go into the draft with uh, with playing for house money. You know, I mean, if you've already got one superior edge rusher, right? 
and another superior defensive lineman, your options are really open going in, going into the draft, right? Mm -hmm. You've already got your quarterback. You've got at least one really good defensive lineman. So if you just have to go corner or you have to go receiver, I know that's going to piss some folks off. You can, or if Joe Alt drops to you uh, at eight, you can you can do what you need to do. So I'm really interested to see if we can go ahead and get this Reddick deal done. And if we can uh, find Calais, that'd be great. So those are my thoughts. Chase, Rumor, where you at with it? Rumor has it, Chase, the Hassan Reddick deal may cost a second, uh, possibly something else as well. Uh, Chase, would you give up a second right now, looking at your roster, looking at your team uh, for Hassan Reddick? Would you make that move? Man, it's like I said the other day, this guy is consistent in one thing, and that is sacks in the NFL. That's 11 sacks the last four seasons, 16 on his career high, and 22. Uh, I will trade a number two for Hassan Reddick. Him with a great Jerry Anamata, uh, Calais Campbell, a possible return there. Um, a lot of players in rotation here in Atlanta, and I think it could be really dirty. We're looking at a top 10 defense already just on paper. Falcon fans, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Once again, we are almost at – a thousand subscribers we need your help go ahead and tag your falcons friends tag your falcons family big shout out to all the admins uh who allow one time for the fan in their groups too as well um you mentioned that chase to terry to you now campbell raheem said he spoke with calais campbell um giving calais of course you know he's he's a veteran giving mm -hmm. him his time to take whatever he needs to to say hey look whenever the time is ready I'll make a decision on the Falcons or I'll make a decision on coming back to play in the NFL or whatever it's going to be. Um, I would love to, for the Reddick move to be made this week so we can get some yeah. type of comfort here, Falcon fans. Once again, they haven't really touched the defense. It's been about, what, a week and, a, a week and some change now? They haven't really touched the defense. So Falcon fans are thinking they got to have a trade somewhere. They got to have something lined up because we haven't heard much. Unless you're going into the draft and selecting, you know, six or seven picks that's going to be defensive to help build this team, which is kind of cool. We did a mock the other night that came out pretty much heavy defensive, and we got a B, a B, B plus grade. But, Chase, you haven't made a move defensively. Raheem made the comments about he spoke to Calais Campbell. You're not going to spend a bunch of money on getting possibly – I mean, it's possible you can after you do some restructures if you want to get Reddick. Pay him, Campbell, pay him, and then go into the draft or whatever they have. But let's just say they don't go after Calais Campbell. And let's just say they don't go after Hassan Reddick. Chase, what what is the direction then? You saw Clowney get signed to the Panthers today. Well, there's a guy that I feel like everybody's been leaving off the list. That was a guy that was uh one of our sack leaders this season, and that's Bud Dupree. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a guy I think that you can go back and you can get on a cheap deal. He hasn't been picked up, he worked well in your system. Um, he's one of them fast edge rushers. If you're going to a 3-4, he's somebody you could leave Roman on the edge, something he did very well in college. Bud Dupree uh, did it in Tennessee for a couple of years as well. So there's a guy there that I'm looking at. Um, and then you're talking, if you go into the draft with no edge rush, you haven't did anything for defense. I think if Dallas Turner falls to you, that's your move. You're going to go with the young guy, let him flourish under a Grady Jarrett and Anamata. Um, a lot of guys there, you know, you also have Zach still in the room. Uh, the young rookie that took a lot of snaps towards the end of the season. So there's a lot of places, a lot of ways the Atlanta Falcons can go. And guys, I don't know if y'all seen it or not, but there was a cornerback that just touched every pole there was to touch on the on the vertical jump here uh, today at his pro day. So there's this draft is going to be crazy. There's so many scenarios Falcons could go. Uh, like Terry said, you could go that receiver route. You could go the the edge rusher. You could go the cornerback. Um, you could trade back and grab the picks. There's so many routes. Draft night is going to be crazy. Falcon fans, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Um, draft night is going to be crazy. We did a draft the other day. The mock drafts, I have to say, Chase, you've done them before. They're really fun. Yeah. Uh, Terry, we did one the other night. It was cool to see that we traded back. We did two mocks. One of the mocks that we did was with a, with a Reddit trade and without a Reddit trade. And mm -hmm. without the Reddit trade, we was able to trade back Get Dallas Turner, get Latu from UCLA. Yes. Second round, go and get Brandon Fisk from Florida State. Yep. And you loaded up on three defensive players where the grades were A, A, and A across the simulator. And it's like, 
if this is possible that you can land these three guys. Where did you get Dallas Turner at? What number? Uh, we got was, we back at 12, right? No, we got him at 11. My bad. 11. We got him at 11, and we got lots of – Was there an edge that went before Dallas Turner? I wish I could pull up everything. We we did trade back with the uh, Vikings. You, you got me there. We took your second round, too, as well. So we had the Dallas Turner pick at 11. We had Latu at 23. Then we had Brandon Fisk at um, 43, round two. Max Melton, round three. Cole Bishop, round four. Marcus Rosemary's uh, Jackson Saint, round five. Cody Schrader, the running back from Missouri at six. And uh, Steel Chambers at seven. Imagine um, if you can get two first-round picks in this draft. Come on, Chase. Come on, Chase. Man, you're looking you like the lines from last year. Dude, you look might at have the jump. to look at the jump the lines made. They did their first round picks. They got it right two years in the draft, and now their competitors could have been in the big game if they could have got it right there towards the end. But you build your team through the draft. This is the draft to do it. Chase, one thing I'm looking at right now is there are some teams. Even the Raiders seem to be sneaky right now that they might even move up for draft night. All these rumors and reports, we can give our opinion too as well about this because Daniel Jeremiah and Bucky Jones, all these people talking about what the teams could do. Here on One Time for the Fan, let me tell you what I think. Somebody's going to do something on draft night that, that we haven't even talked about yet. Yep. And it, happened it could last be year. A, it happened last year too as well. We were so heavy on Jalen Carter that when the B. John Robinson move came down, it, it was getting more apparent closer and closer to the draft day. It but was then the for some fans, they were still saying, no, it's Jalen. It's Jalen. It's Jalen. Draft night, the, Falcons. The Texans what? swapped everything up, dude. Yep. Uh, after the Texans, the whole draft went a different route. I mean, it was crazy. Falcon fans, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. I think the Raiders could do something uh, this draft and move up, unless they're going to stay pit and choose Penix. The Vikings seem to – want to be a little bit more active than what you're hearing in the reports. Maybe they move up to the top five, but somebody's going to call the Falcons on draft night. Not saying that they're going to trade the pick, but somebody's going to call the Falcons on draft night. You know, just like somebody's going to call the Bears on number nine. Terry? I'm sorry. I heard a wild rumor. What you got, Terry? Someone, rather, on the Twitter. I'm new to the Twitter, or X, as they call it. <laughs> Twix. But but Twix, there you go. <laughs> but um, I heard that JJ McCarthy might actually be drafted number two, which I I could not believe. I've seen it. I've seen but it. But I I did see it. Now I just I have to ask this question. Well, I have to ask this question. If Caleb goes two, and I'm sorry, Caleb goes one, right? JJ McCarthy goes two. Uh, my man Drake May goes three. Are you, if you're the Falcons, and I, I just gotta put this out there, and you know where I'm going, but I gotta ask it if Caleb Daniels, Caleb, Jaylen. I don't need a darn defense at Jaylen. all. Daniels, Jaylen. 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 Jay I'm sorry, Jay. Jay, Jay uh, thank you. You know what, fellas? Hey, I love y'all. Are y'all so used to be messing up names? You just correct it and keep going. <laughs> thank you both. Okay, I'm, thank you. I'm Jake, thank you to Chad. the fans. I'm sorry. I'm thank Jay, you, Jake Chad. from State Farm. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Seriously, seriously. If Jalen Daniels is there at four, I'm gonna throw it out there to the panel. Would you enter? I know we just signed Kirk Cuzzo. I'm good. Would you entertain? Did, did, did you guys watch Jaden Daniels' uh, pro day today? I did not. Right now. It's actually, it's I actually did, I did not. Right now. I did it's not. It's on NFL and, Network right now. And amid, my guys. And I mean, amid. his stats throughout college football shows that he's definitely Heisman material. And he he's was the definitely best player a, He was a baller in college. No doubt. Definitely, no doubt. He was definitely the best player on that field for LSU. But that's what you get, Chase, in a 2024 draft. Maybe yeah. next year he wouldn't be where he is ranked. Don't forget, next year's draft of quarterbacks is going to have Sadura Sanders, Carson Beck. Carson so Beck. So where are they going to rank in this field, too, as well, where, you know, the NFL is starting to change. You know what I'm saying? And you can see Quentin Lavender here said, so look, if we get a middle linebacker and move Troy Anderson to edge, I like Troy more inside. Move. But then again, it's a thought that I'm not the coach. 
I like Troy more inside because that's where Troy has played majority of uh, of, his, of his career. But then again, Troy mm-hmm. has he moves around a lot too as well. So yeah. where does the defense and Jimmy Lake? Where do they want to put Troy? I'm perfectly fine with it. If they do send Troy from the edge or from the middle, go for it. Rack up on the sacks. Get the quarterback to the ground. Mm-hmm. Let's get this defense rolling. And it's good to even hear Troy Anderson's name being mentioned in the chat. Right, Troy Anderson is. Like he's a he's a decent player here in the NFL, right? And I'm glad that the Falcons drafted him. And the injury it sucks, but sure you get back to 100 percent with you and Caden and Lamon and we man, got a squad. I will. I want to know if either one of y'all trade up to four. I just, nah. I just want to know. No, nah, not not hungry enough. No. Nah, uh, the only reason why I say no, Terry, is because you. The only way you're making that move is if you really think. Jaden Daniels is going to be a freaking stud in the NFL. And I say that because you got a Kirk Cousins and you can sit back in the second or the third round and possibly grab a, there's a lot of quarterbacks, Joe Milton. You look at the guy from uh, Florida state. That's a guy there. That's going to be probably a good quarterback. Once he gets healthy. I love so I how think, Terry mentioned this chase. Yeah. Taylor Heineke is not the certified nope. backup right now. So mm-hmm. I know throw that throw that into your talking point right now, Chase. They've yeah. already talked about it. So right. not moving up to get a quarterback, but like you said, Joe Milton, Chase, four, fifth round, sixth round. There's gonna be some yeah. guys that I yeah. mean the Florida State guy was on the path to win the Heisman. If he doesn't get Jordan hurt, Travis. I believe he does. Jordan Travis. Well, God, guys, I, I would say this. I think a lot of these quarterbacks are gonna go higher than projected. Now that you know, again, they may. They may. They, they, going at two may be cannon fodder. Right, that may be cat litter, but if it's true, that would put the top four at least gone by pick seven or eight. And with Michael Penix not far behind, and still you got nine or ten teams that need a quarterback, you could have five go in the top twenty. Right, this is the one guy I think. I think they're they're really slipping on. I think a team is going to. A team that needs a quarterback is probably going to select the guy that they want early, trade back up, and go get Penix. Or if they feel comfortable day two selecting Penix, they're going to do that. But the Raiders might be a team to say, we're going to take a shot on this kid. Right? Yeah, and yeah the Raiders are hungry. They, they, I can see the Raiders saying it like, we're going to take a shot on this kid. But yeah. some teams I – saw, I saw a report the other day that I think the Patriots or the commander, some team was going to select a wide receiver – with their top five pick and then come back in the first round and then go get a Penix or a Bo Nix. So they kind of get their quarterback in and get their trade receiver. with the Falcons at eight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I you know what? I, I'm starting to think that is a very real possibility because all of these top five might go in the top 15. Mm-hmm. Again, if JJ goes to that throws everything. Uh, that's crazy. That throws everything. Everything, right? Because so I mean I, I hey I don't know, but we may be in a situation where we can trade back and rack up on picks because it's gonna cost, right? Supply and demand, right? It's it's gonna cost. And so if I'm sitting at it, go ahead, go ahead, no, Jack. No, 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 I'm getting ready to add to it as soon as you finish. Go ahead, yep. Yeah, yeah, no, same it, path here. If if I'm sitting at eight. It's going to cost you a first and a second. Mm-hmm. Or we're not talking because oh, there's yeah, probably yeah, three others behind cost. you. Yeah, it's going to it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost yeah. you your first and your second this year. And yeah, the conversation yeah. starts and ends with that. And that's if you're not Minnesota, because if you're Minnesota, it's going to cost you your first and your first this year. And maybe we maybe I can be convinced to go to the second if you sweeten it a little for me. But. I don't know, man. It, it's yeah. I might have to think about that. that. You put a steep here's price the on cool it, thing. Sure. Yes, but here's the cool thing, Chase and T. Will. We talked about these scenarios when we didn't have a quarterback. Mm-hmm. We now have a quarterback. Yeah. So the talk and of the Falcons going quarterback in the draft is not there, and you could you could trade back at eight. Yeah. Collect some more picks and still get your guy and another guy and some more picks. Yeah. And I'm telling you that the, the trade that was made today, I think Tori McElhaney had the post up that she was able to get a trade back. 
Jared Verse, and Queon Mitchell. You got your pass rusher and your cornerback. Yep. Mm-hmm. With your trade back. Come on. With Minnesota? Who's going to hate that? Matter of fact, I'm pulled up. Was it with Minnesota? Did we get two first round picks or a first and a second in, in that one? In her we trade? Pull we finna pull it up because Tori, she does a great job reporting with the Falcons. And uh, yeah, when she put, when she posted it today, uh, people were talking about it like, yeah, the trade back would be perfect. It definitely would be perfect. Matter of fact, before we get to that, too, as well, Chase, as I'm pulling this up, coach mentioning that Taylor is not the backup, right? Not well, not saying he's going to be bad, not the backup, he's going to be he's fighting for that it. backup role. He's he has earn to it. earn it. There's going to be a right. competition battle. Does it sound like that, Chase, where they're going to go r- rookie? Or does it sound like they're going to bring another veteran, a Tannehill, somebody that can, you know, come I forgot Tannehill him? is still on the free agents market. I yep. forgot about that. Uh, that may be a move. I don't know, Jack. You may have just unlock the key to everything. I don't know. Um, I think that the Falcons are going to, like I said, they're going to do their due diligence on these rookies coming into the draft. Um, if there's a guy on the board that they see favor, uh, Terry's already took a chance on a third rounder in Desmond Ritter. I think Terry would maybe take a chance on a guy this round, uh, third or fourth, maybe maybe the fifth. I don't know. But I think if I really think if the guy from Travis Hunter, I think if he's there, I think that's a guy you look at in the third round and um, bring him in, let him compete with Taylor Heineke. Um, you've seen the production from Taylor Heineke out of a couple games last year. Why not bring in a new face? See what happens. Um, you could have your franchise sitting behind Kirk for three to four years. Terry, uh, Taylor fighting for the backup role. We don't have a QB three right now, but whoever they bring in, I mean, coach already has mentioned it at the NFL's coaches meeting, um, which means it's something on his mind. It's going to be a competition battle that we have to mention. We were kind of not favored on Taylor just being the backup because they decided to trade Desmond and keep Taylor. But now you hear the comments from coach. There's going to be a little battle here coming up to see who can back up behind Kirk. So your thoughts on that, uh, T. Will? Um, I think he's basically saying, Kirk, you got to. I'm sorry. Uh, Taylor, you got to earn it. Mm-hmm. You know, you got you got to earn it. We're not going to give it to you. Uh, I think that's a way of holding Taylor accountable by saying, look what you did. And I'm not saying he's saying it, but the fact that you're not giving him the backup position yeah. He's saying, look, your performance last year was not ex- was not acceptable. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have to improve if you want to earn this backup role. Mm-hmm. And he may. Again, guys, you know, I honestly believe Taylor Heineke is better than what he showed last year. Now, was yes. it play yes. calling? Was it non-familiarity with the playbook? Was it execution? I don't know. Okay. Could have been all three. But I have seen this man perform better, specifically against the Falcons, twice. Mm-hmm. I would believe that the offense that we are running this year would be similar to what they ran in Washington at the time that Taylor was there. Yep. So with all that being said, his performance should be better. But, you know, I, I, I think Raheem is right. You know, you, last year's performance was not acceptable. And um, if you want this backup position, you're going to have to earn it. We have to know we can trust you should something, you know, God forbid, happen. So there you go. Those are my thoughts. Falcon fans, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Let's get to the chat before we bring up this uh, mock draft that Tori did because the trade back is amazing with this uh, mock. And if you could get these two players, you're going to – it's a scenario, Chase, that we love talking about here on the channel. Because we've we've talked about a hundred different ways the Falcons can bring in a bunch of talent this offseason and looking at the cap space and restructures they have to do and all this, you know, financial stuff. We know that they're going to be on the right side of, of uh, you know, making sure everybody's good to go before draft. They're going to make sure they have enough money to sign their draft class. But if you're going to trade back to see what. Tori got during her mock, her mock kind of shows like what we got the other night during our mock T will Mm -hmm. um, where teams are going to give up a lot for that eighth pick and the Falcons sitting there knowing that you can get there's three studs in the first round that are pass rushers. 
Mm-hmm. So let's not just keep Dallas Turner at the top when there's right. two other guys that the Falcons can target and say, that's our guy. Mm-hmm. And then can we talk a, about that? Can we, can we talk about yeah. those three for just a sec? Because Latu, Turner, and your boy, um, Verse. 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 Yeah. So contingent upon who you ask, they, they don't feel like um, Turner is number one. They know he's fast. They know he has a motor. But I've heard some people say that um, Latu, from the usage of his hands, is probably number one in, in, in their eyes. And the reason I bring it up is mm-hmm. we probably need to explain to our viewers how in the heck we got Latu at 23. And so that is I'm- because... You know, Latu supposedly has some sort of injury that nobody's mm-hmm. talking about that allowed him to slip to 23, right? Because, mm-hmm. but from all for all intents and purposes, I guess talking with various sources, a lot of people feel like Latu is 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 developed now, right? Mm-hmm. Now, long term ceiling, Dallas Turner probably has a higher ceiling, right? Because he's fast, he's got a motor. But from my from what I'm hearing, his hands and specifically his technique is not where it needs to be, where Latu is already there. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there because I felt like we needed to explain to the viewers how how we got Latu at 23. With that being said, go ahead, Jack. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you're perfectly fine. We're talking Falcons football and Chase. Scott mentioned it the other night, which. On the mock, a mock, you was able to get Dallas Turner on the trade back. And then, mm-hmm. of course, we had the, the tempo on fast, so it went quickly down to the Falcons at the 23rd pick. And you saw Latu sitting there, and you're saying, how is he still on the board in this situation where we thought can't go wrong with enough edge rushers? You didn't already got Dallas. And this was when we didn't trade for Redick. So now we're loading up on pass rushers. Mm-hmm. But to see these draft scenarios – is actually um it's it's amazing man it's amazing but uh if you could land a guy like Latu if you could land a verse if you could land a a Dallas Turner I don't think fans would be upset you no. can't be upset after watching yeah. the tape and the film from all three of these guys but if Turner summer I saw some comments where people said Turner's like of a Vic Beasley, right? Saw some people mention that. For me, I haven't watched enough too Dal- too much Dallas Turner to say this kid is a, is a Vic Beasley, right? Okay. If he comes here to the Falcons, he's going to make an impact with this coaching with with this team, right? Mm-hmm. The way this team is set up, you put him in there week one, he's ready to go. Latu, the injury, maybe that's why some people see him on the later side of the of, of, of the first round. And if it's possible, the Falcons do get a trade back, and they can get a corner first, and then get a lot to in the later in the later first round. That's actually pretty cool. But then Jared Verse, Chase, I haven't heard nothing but good things about Jared Verse. He was a guy on my list last year until he decided to sit back a year. Everything has never it hasn't been Jared versus dropping or stock is raising. Jared Verse has been sitting where he's been sitting. His combine was was nice. His, uh, I don't know if they have the pro day coming up, but everything he's done at Florida State last year was, you know, decent enough to put him where he is right now, getting ready for the NFL. But the numbers he has put up has been impressive too, as well. So for Falcon fans, if you land a Jared Verse, can't be wrong with that. Cannot go wrong with that. Jeremiah Williams in the chat say, "I gotta say, so I'm gonna be the, what? I'm gonna to be Falcons running back when I get drafted. Oh, you want to be the Falcons running back when you get drafted? Sheesh. Well, I throw 80 on the run, Chase." I hear that. I knew that was coming. <laughs> Just want to let y'all know. Falcon fans, hit I that knew- like, hit that share, hit that subscribe button. Check this out. Let's get straight to it. Check out this mock before we get back to our topics. This is how we get off track and get right back on track. So Tori did her mock, right, Chase? Yeah. From uh, the Falcons. And Tori does a great job. Um, you know. Uh, There's Jim J.J. McCarthy at too. Giving us all the information uh, from the Atlanta Falcons, but yeah, second pick JJ McCarthy, the first pick, of course, you know, Caleb Williams, but JJ McCarthy at two, Drake May at three, Marvin Harrison, uh, Jr. at four, Malik Neighbors at five, Daniels goes 
to the Giants at six. I don't see that. Remember, Terry, what you mentioned this. If yeah, JJ no, 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 I do. Second pick. Yeah, if he's the second pick, it kind of messes some things up. It does, right? It does. It does. It does. But does it hurt or help the Falcons? The... I wouldn't say so. Go ahead. I don't. I don't see him going to the Giants. I mean, he might go somewhere else, but I, I don't. Anyway, but that, yeah, it, it would do that. So that's four, right, in the top six. Mm -hmm. And then Who you got the Olu, Olu Fashanu from Penn State, the offensive tackle. Now, here's what. Wait a minute. Where the Falcons go? Number eight, what the the Vikings did? What I just mentioned this that Penix so might not Penn. go day two. Somebody, the Raiders, the Broncos, the Vikings. Chase, let's go back to when we didn't have a quarterback. Remember, I said this. How many teams needed quarterbacks? How many quarterbacks mm -hmm. were available? You have to make a decision. And if you get to draft night and you don't have your guy, you might have to draft your guy. The Vikings traded up on Tory's mock. And gave us the 11 and 23. This is where the Falcons start eating. This is where the Falcon fans show up to draft night at the bins and they start throwing the popcorn and having the beer showers. Because now you have <laughs> traded your eight to the 11th pick. Brock Bowers, go dogs. He goes to the, to the Bears at nine. Joe Alt oh, goes man. at 10. Here it goes. Jared Verse is the 11th pick. And that we had him in that range of 10 through 15 for the longest. At 11, the Falcons get their pass pressure, Chase. But guess what, Chase? We're still eating. Even Bo Nix goes 12 to Denver. Denver said, F it. We're not even waiting. Right yeah. Now, yeah, that, and that's that's what I'm talking about. Hungry. How many that's teams what I'm talking about. How many quarterbacks and, and, available? Y'all better go back and listen to what I'm talking about. Tell y'all this before, man. Right. Right. Yeah, that, no, that's man. What I tell y'all, teams that's are not six, waiting. Yeah, that's six in the top 12. And that, and, and you're right. That that's absolutely what you said, Jack. That's, that's these, absolutely what you said. Yeah. One of them, one of them reaches. Dallas Turner goes fourteen. That definitely to, was a reach. Fourteen to the Dallas Turner Kings goes fourteen Ains? to the Saints. Don't forget, Falcons traded their pick. That, just, in, so that means the Ains have Chase Young and Dallas and, Turner. And Dallas Turner. Now. Falcons trade scary. the mock that Tory had up. Falcons traded back to eleven with the Vikings. Select Jared Verse, but Chase. You have a starter on the field with Jared Verse. You yeah. have a starter day one. But guess what, Chase? But guess what, Chase? You're still back on the board. You're still back on the board at 23. And you grab your corner. Yep. You grab the, probably the best corner. Remember BPA? Remember yep. BPA? You just took two BPAs off the board in the first round. Falcon mm. fans should be excited about Tory's mock right here. This will have me going Crazy on draft night because you know we're going live on draft night. But if I see the Falcons was the trade back and cut, what? <laughs> oh, come on, man. Mm. Oh, come on, man. Mm, mm, mm. You can't beat this at the Falcons trade back and slip. This mock was, I wanted to see if the, the Tory post the whole, I wanted to see what her second, third, and fourth, and fifth, and sixth round looked like. Because if you did this, Falcon fans, y'all gonna be so excited when y'all get these two players in the building. Jared verse day one. Chase, your thoughts on Tory's mock? Jared verse trade back, and of course, uh, Quinion Mitchell from Toledo. Yeah, man, that's your splurge for Jimmy Lake. There's his that's his talent to get his defense started. Uh, you're really putting the talent in his hands to put it out on the field and make something happen. So, like I said, uh, even with you know free agency of what we've done, uh, bringing back Nate Lamon. Uh, pairing these guys with the type of defense you want to run here, a 3-4, Jared Verse run that a pretty good bit through college. So that there speaks to me why you take Jared Verse over Dallas Turner at number 11. Um, the Quinion Mitchell, uh, probably, like you said, the best overall cornerback in the draft speed-wise. Um, he's stuck to his opponents like Lou, a very solid man-to-man -man coverage cornerback. So um, – Definitely, like like Raheem Moore said, you want to add to that room. Uh, the cornerback safety room is already a very talented room to be able to add to. Uh, would be huge. So I think you walk away draft night with that scenario in in, in round one. Uh, you walk away with an A plus and everybody's. And Falcon fans in the chat, Falcon fans hit that like, share, and subscribe button. There's multiple scenarios the Falcons can use for draft night. We don't stick on one. Chase, you've had a hundred mocks. You've had a hundred different scenarios. T Will, you've given me a hundred different scenarios. I talked to Berto the other day. He gave me a hundred different scenarios. 
Falcon fans, whoever you bring into the building, let's just make sure he's ready week one to go on the field and make an impact. And I think the Falcons, the way that they're talking, they said they're going to add more to the receiver room. They're going to add more to the secondary. They're going to add more to the – of course, looking at your team, that's that's basic stuff that most teams are going to do. So fans shouldn't look at it and say, oh, they're adding to the receiver room. Of course they're going to add to the receiver room. There's only five receivers right now in the room. Like you got to you got to go out there and get some more some more depth and see who you can bring in, who's practice squad, who's going to be fighting for different battles. Some would say Hodge is not even going to be here on the roster when the competition battles start rolling around. They might draft two guys that says, hey, these guys are studs. You saw what they did in L.A. when they drafted, what's your boy name, uh, in the fifth round? Uh, what's the guy's Nick, name from the Rams? Why Nakua. 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 If you had that much success with Nakua in L.A., I mean, who knows who you're going to draft here in the fourth and the fifth round with the Falcons? Who knows, you indeed. A guy that's definitely a weak, yeah, you can get a guy that's a week one starter. The way they're going to run this offense with Kirk, Kirk's going to get the ball around. 4,000, 4,500-yard 4, uh, passing quarterback. He's going to get the ball around. Everybody's going to yeah. eat. Yeah. I so believe Falcon it. Fans, hit the like, hit the share, hit that subscribe button. I'm all for any move the Falcons make. I'm not just saying Dallas, uh, Jared Verse is the guy. But if you're getting Latu, I see why the Falcons went Latu. If you're going Verse, I see why they're going Verse. If you're going Dallas Turner, I see where you're going Turner. If you go guard, I, I don't know why you're going guard. <laughs> you go tackle, I'm cool with the all, but I'm sitting here like, man, <laughs> what's what's the backup? What's the backup plan? Like, I'm cool with the alt move. I have no problem with it, but. It's, it's, you're running the same line this year, and of it's course, you know best. players. Get, yep, players get banged up, and you gotta have to you know rotate some players every now and then. But I need to build this defense. This is what Jack Spade is talking. Jack Spade wants to build this defense, <laughs> right? And unless you go make a move for Reddick this week, or you bring back Bud and Calais, and you start doing some you know some defensive moves, I'm looking at that eighth pick. Like, let's go get a, a defensive stud. And, you know, let's get the fan base excited. Let's get a guy who can uh, get to the quarterback, man. This is what it's all about. I mean, you did a good job on offense. You're still going to add to the offensive room. But you need to go get another guy on defense, man. You need to get some players. You got a couple players that's rounding 30-plus uh, here. You know, so let's get some what, guys in the middle. Terry? I'll tell you what. If you already got Hassan Reddick, one of those edge rushers looks a whole lot better, man. You bring in Reddick, that's a totally different story. Now you can go get – you can fucking draft a punter. You bring in Reddick. I don't even care. <laughs> Just telling you right now, because rise up, man. Go Falcons. Um, one thing that Raheem mentioned is uh, and this is no knock to Ritter, big shout out to Desmond Ritter for everything he did here. But Raheem mentions if you have a quarterback, you have a chance. Raheem's been in that situation where he didn't have a quarterback before when he was head coach in Tampa years ago. And of course, you know, the situation he had when he was the interim coach here in Atlanta. Um, team was just it wasn't Raheem's team, right. So he was put in that situation. But to hear Raheem's uh, comments, Chase and Terry, about saying if you have a quarterback, you have a chance, and them going after Kirk Cousins, this is just pretty much you're, you're really you're getting fans going in the right direction, right? You went after Kirk. You know what Kirk can do. We know what type of quarterback he is. We know the schedule. But to hear – the comments from Raheem earlier this offseason about him being here because of the quarterback play, them trading Ritter, keeping Heineke, and bringing in Kurt. What are your thoughts about that when he says, if you have a quarterback, you have a chance, Chase? Uh, it's uh, 100% a true statement. Um, you look at the playoffs, there wasn't a single team in the playoffs that didn't have a decent quarterback. Yeah, he, Baker Mayfield, I mean, but he still took his team to the playoffs. Uh, mm -hmm. You got to have a quarterback to succeed in this league. Uh, we've seen it the past two years with the Marcus Mariota, the Desmond Ritter, uh, the Taylor Heineke. Uh, it just it shows that you can't win games in the NFL without a dominant quarterback, and it's something Kirk Cousins has done throughout his whole career is, is win games and produce dominant stats, and that's really what Zach Robinson and Raheem Morris and the whole coaching staff wanted. They wanted a chance to, to take this team to the playoffs. They really feel like the roster is win now. 
Um, I would say for sure the roster is win now more than it has been since 2016. Um, I think the team is really on go to win now. Uh, you get these few pieces on defense, really go deep in the draft. Uh, you're kind of, to me, resembling the 2016 season where you stacked up on defense in the draft, and uh, you went pretty deep that year. So if that's how you do it, so be it. But um, anything to see the Falcons in the playoffs, I'm, I'm for it. Falcon fans, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. T. Will, Arthur Blank mentioned as well, um, speaking to the media, we needed better quarterback play, and we got that with Kurt. You, it seems like everybody's on the same page in that building about better quarterback play. Oh. Heard of it a lot in the offseason. Fans were talking about it since last season. They got Kirk in the building. There are some fans that are saying, hey, the injury, you paid this guy too much money, the age, should have drafted a young guy. We understand. We don't bash. We don't uh, you know, bring negative vibes toward the fans who think of that. But the Falcons did what the Falcons wanted to do, and we're here to talk about Kirk Cousins, right? So for Terry, Arthur Blank mentioning that uh, he needed better quarterback play as the owner of this team. He got it now with Kirk. They're trusting in Kirk. We talked about this, Terry. It reminds them a little bit of Matt in a way, right? Would have been better if we got Kirk two or three years younger, but still, where he is right now in his career, he's a decent quarterback. Terry, your thoughts on Mr. Blank? talking about better quarterback play. I think Mr. Blank is absolutely right. You know, you guys have said it. Chase said it. You're not going to get anywhere if you don't have at least decent, right? At, at, at least serviceable quarterback play. You're not going to, you're not going to get there. And again, it was nothing personal, right? And mm -hmm. you know, to the fans out there who wanted a younger quarterback, if that was viable, then maybe you do that. But clearly, one, two, and three are not trading, and they're selecting quarterbacks. So the quarterback that I guess our regime felt they needed that could be an elite processor day one wasn't going to be available. In my humble opinion, in my humble opinion, I think the Falcons made the best move they could. You know, no disrespect to Justin. But I would say at least 31 other teams do not view him as a starter. So it's not just the Falcons, right? It's not just the Falcons. I believe the Steelers came out and said he's a backup. So your options were Russell, who wasn't coming here. We've been over that. Justin, both of those quarterbacks, you heard the news now, both of those quarterbacks wasn't coming here. Russ wasn't right. coming here, and Justin Fields on his list of teams apparently didn't have the Falcons. Right. He wanted to go right. to a team so, that wanted him, and it seems right. to be the Steelers. In the world we live in, Kirk Cuzzo was your only choice, and we Kirk got him. Yes. And we got him. So I think Mr. Blank – there you go. I think Mr. Blank is absolutely on, right. Come on, Chase. Come on now. I don't – I don't – I don't – What, what is that, Chase? Chase, <laughs> oh, Chase blinging. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love oh, it. Snap. I love it. No, but I think it was the only move we could make. Right. You know, it, it, again, I look let me tell you something. I want to be six foot five. I'm five foot nine. I'm not going to be anything other than five nine guys at least once a year. And I'm going to do this for the purposes of this show. I have a dream that I have a big ass afro. It's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. There's the world we live in and there's the world you want to live in. Kirk was the hey. He was the prom queen. This year, he was the prom queen, and we got him. So get on board. You know, I, we, we can have a difference of opinion. That's fine. But this is our guy now, so we need all of Atlanta to embrace him because this is our guy. And we got a shot, guys. We got a realistic shot of doing some damage in the playoffs. That's how I feel about it. You're going to add to the receiver room. Big shots out to Terry. Big shout out to Raheem for speaking to the media. Uh, it's great to see the coaches meeting because that means you're really, really close to these players getting back out there. Um, and some of us follow the players, too, as well on social media. You see Hodge is out there working out. Uh, you see a lot of these players is out there working out. Bijan posted a video, I think, last week, mm -hmm. him doing some running back drills, too, as well. So it is the offseason, but players are finding ways to get better. You saw when they announced that Kurt was the quarterback. Players were excited. Um, and we talked about it here on the channel. 
before Kirk, how many teams needed quarterbacks and how many quarterbacks were, were available? The Falcons it, moved quickly to get their guy. And now we're in a position going into the draft where you can stay at eight and get your guy. You can trade back and get your guy. But trading up at this point, I don't see that no more. So now it's just pretty much two different options that I see. Terry? Me neither. Me neither. But you know what else, guys? You can tell a lot about a player by how his former teammates, guys that went to work with him every day, by how they feel about him. And they love this guy. And I, I'll use the converse of that. Um, Stefan Diggs, at this point, I'm really not sure he's a Josh Allen fan. Hmm. I'm, I'm I'm really not right, and I and and Josh Allen is great. I'm not saying he's not, but if you're going to lead a team, you have to maintain that respect. And everything with the Kirk Cuzzo in the chains, that was a show of respect. He's relatable to these guys. He's relatable, right? Yes. There you go. There you go. So I think that bodes well for us because we got a guy that our guys will follow. We got a guy that our guys will love. You ever work for somebody like you? I mean, you ever have a really good boss? I mean, a really good boss. That really good boss call you on a Friday and when you're off and ask you to work, you don't mind doing it for him because you respect him. You like the guy. He's relatable. But if you ever worked for an a not so nice guy, I'm working on my cousin, right? Yeah. And I'm not I'm not saying Josh Allen is that, but if you ever just work for a jerk, you probably won't even answer your phone if he called. I'm not go I'm not doing nothing. There are guys out there that feel that way about their quarterbacks. So that to me, that's another good thing. Like Justin Jefferson, or what was it? Justin Jefferson, is that his name? Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. did not want to let Kirk go. He was like, No, do whatever you got to do to keep him. So that to me, that bodes well, guys. I think we got a winner. I think we got a guy that his best is yet to come. That's just my opinion. This is how I feel about it. I saw a Falcon fan the other day. You know, we'll wrap this up here because we already went over the hour mark. We do thank everybody for being in the podcast, talking Falcons football with, uh, with us tonight. But What's I saw up, a Falcon Lisa? fan. Uh, they shot the Lisa Shepard, too. Lisa, do they have the Kirk Cousins jerseys at the team store? Um, Kirk, could they Kirk. do shit? I'm trying to run down there and go get one of them, <laughs> but um, yeah, I saw a Falcon fan who normally bashes the Falcons or is upset about the Falcons play over the past couple years, and he's not in our groups and everything, somebody I went to school with. Uh, but he's excited about Kirk Cousins and he's been mm -hmm. posting that he's you know he's gonna go a lot more games this year. And he's excited about the team. Looks like they want to be in a win now situation. I might even invite him to the podcast uh, sure. to talk some Falcons football with us because uh, he does have a position in the uh, music industry as well. Um, but, you know, he's he represents Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? But the team hasn't been doing well enough for this fan to agree with what the moves have been made. But now I can see that fans are getting back on board because we have a quarterback. Right. We have a guy who people can respect. I think Derek Carr, I think Bryce Young, I think Baker Mayfield has to respect what we have here in Atlanta at quarterback. Chase, you've been heavy on Kirk Cousins uh, since he was brought here to Atlanta, even beforehand. Um, weapons have been added. They're going to continue to add more weapons. I was going to do a mock here tonight, but it's going to be a little bit too late. So we'll probably do a mock coming up soon. Next time you're back, Chase, you heard about Terry adding to the wide receiver room and. Uh, some of the guys that they want to, uh, you know, look at for draft. I mean, I didn't mention no names, but the position groups they want to look at. Um, all of this is to build a winning culture, Chase. And the guy at the top of that who's going to help, you know, be the that first step is Kirk Cousins. Uh, your thoughts now that we are just <clears throat> about two weeks away, or no, about a month away from draft. Still, you know, we're, we're, we're eating in the free agency. But what's your, what's your thoughts so we can wrap up this Kirk Cousins talk here? I love it, man. Uh, I, I love every bit of the Kirk Cousins. Uh, like I said multiple times, he's he's a winner, man. He's, he's proven it. Yes, his playoff record's not so great. Um, there's been I, – I was with a podcast. I don't know if it may have been one time for the fan, but I was talking to a podcaster, and they were mentioning how Kirk 
played um, back in the playoffs, how Kurt really carried that team on his back those couple of seasons. They, they made it to the playoffs. Certain places didn't come out his way. So they were pretty much saying Kurt Cousins' playoff play was not any – worse than his regular season play. Mm -hmm. um, so to see Kirk Cousins possibly make the playoffs with the Falcons, uh, take us to the next level, maybe win a playoff game. Guys, if we win a playoff game, it's been it's been way too long. Uh, and to see that happen in Atlanta, it can be win one and then out the next round. I'm going to be a happy fan. Uh, it shows progression. You haven't seen that in a while. So I think that's what that move I didn't, uh, and, and did, <clears throat> excuse me, indicates is that Kirk Cousins is the winner. Uh, he is to win now. He is the guy that's going to take you over them. And I think Terry and Raheem Morris truly believe that. So um, if they're behind it, I'm behind it, man. Like I said, Terry's been cooking um, the past few drafts. Uh, each one of those players are on the field. Uh, the only guy we've really gotten rid of is Desmond Ritter through a trade that Arizona uh, partaked in. So um, I think Terry's going to do the right thing for the Atlanta Falcons, and whatever that is, man, I'm behind it 100%. Mm -hmm. Falcon fans. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button. This is great. Uh, we can have just a nice, chill, calm night, Wednesday night, talking Falcons football here with the fans, the Falcons community. Once again, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Google us. Um, we are excited about the season. Uh, even though it is far away, we'd love for that season to start next week. Uh, Chase got his jersey. I'm sure the helmet is nearby, too, as well. So they're, <laughs> they need a safety. I'm sure Chase can step up in any way to go help this team. But for Falcon fans here in the chat, I want you all to enjoy this all season. Uh, we do thank you for you know watching One Time for the Fan or wherever you are uh, listening to One Time for the Fan. Um, and, of course, Dirty Fanatics United, you guys have a lot going on over there too as well. Um, we have a lot going on this off season, right? So it's going to be some upcoming events. We want some fans to come on out and be a part of uh fans have always been asking about you know this rise up tour and what we do for the home uh events and what we do for the away game events but we're we're really taking this to the next level chase dirty fanatics united what you guys got going on over there as we wrap up the show man your shout outs and your final thoughts for the night sir yeah, man friday night fan night over at dirty fanatics united uh something we brought to the show where we give the opportunity to, for fans that watch the show to bring their aspect of what they think happened this off season uh their views of the quarterback position so uh if you want to be a part of that man all you got to do is be subscribed uh message me on facebook wherever it is uh, we'll get the link out to you and we'll talk some falcon football we got about four or five special guests friday night uh that are contributors to dirty fanatics united man so uh stoked for that ready for that night um, where my co-host Cody Keeler is giving away a Atlanta Falcon game day ticket if we hit 350 by the end of this month. Um, and he's begging, he's begging for you guys to hit the subscribe button. So we're like nine away from the 350 mark. So head over to DFU, man, hit the subscribe button. It's DFU underscore ATL on YouTube, Dirty Fanatics United uh, on Facebook groups. Uh, you can catch us on TikTok at Dirty Fanatics United. And uh, that's basically where we're at. So uh, all you got to do is head over there, hit the subscribe button, man. We do Falcon content. Um, my other co-host, Philip, constantly pushing out reels, edits. Uh, he does his thing over on the TikTok channel. That's pretty much his page. So um, big shout out to Philip. Um, we're just a Falcon group that loves talking Falcon football, spreading positive messages, uh, bringing you breaking news, obviously. Uh, just stuff Falcon fans like to talk about, man. And um, everybody that's shown me love from one time for the fan, I greatly appreciate it. Um, Jack, a die hard from one time for the fan. Dave showed up in the live chat, so uh, was was pretty stoked to see Dave in the live chat, man. So once again, shout out everybody from one time for the fan showing love to DFU. Uh, shout out to everybody in the comment section. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, man. We greatly appreciate it. Jack, Terry, it's been an awesome show, man. Rise up. It rise up. Hey, hey and uh, Philip loves that 35 to 10 score, man. According to Philip. <laughs> Falcons are gonna whoop a lot of ass next year. That was it thirty-five to ten, Chase. Yeah, man. To 10. Phillip, Phillip is gonna take the Falcons <laughs> over twenty every game. I <laughs> hey, I, look, I I think Philip and Eric Parker are cut from the same cloth. Okay, <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying. So yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Jack. It's I'm good. sorry. It's always good to have Falcon fans talking Falcons football. Like it's the off season. Uh, Chase, you saw a couple weeks ago the chat was turned. One time for the yep. fan chat, we're going about Kurt and Fields and Russell and head coach, and now the chat is like we're just chilling. 
<laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like we just waiting for Falcon news to break. Yeah, I mean, that, the rule changes. Yeah, that the important rule. piece. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got the quarterback. They're building the coaching staff very well. I think they did a great job with that. And what's going to happen here in the future is a change that I can't fast forward this. Chase, you can't fast forward time. But we know the turnaround is coming. We know that the playoff bound is coming. The division winning Falcons is coming. And then the Super Bowl is coming. Man, it's, it's going to happen. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. And when it does happen, you're going to come back to one time for the fan. You're going to say, hey, man, y'all boys always been just so real about this shit. And it's because we are diehard Atlanta Falcon fans, and we want to see this team win. Um, but yeah, Gonzaga. So we shift over to college basketball quickly. <laughs> you have the biggest game of your career against Purdue. Please yep. don't upset me. Please, when I come back to this Friday morning podcast with T. Will, before I go golf, I can talk about Gonzaga beating Purdue and us moving up to the Elite Eight. When is this game? What's for night. breakfast? What's for breakfast? When? Oh, what's for breakfast? Uh, we're doing Waffle House Friday. I'm doing Waffle Shit. House. Doing Waffle House is gonna be some great weather. I think it's like 71 degrees, so I'll be teeing off mm-hmm. like around 11. Bodie don't do the Bodie don't do the bed and breakfast anymore. Shit. <laughs> 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 hey, you know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people been getting raided. You know, them fans been raiding a lot of people. So I don't know if Bodie had his paperwork together. But Falcon fans hit that like, share, and subscribe. Uh, DSGB Hall said Zags in my soldier boy voice. Um, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. But yes, we have some events coming up this summer. Um, the Rise Up Tour, we put out a lot of stuff for these away games. We're waiting for the schedule to drop. Once the schedule drops, we'll be able to let everybody know about these parties and about these events and stuff that we have coming up. Um, so if you are going to any away games this year, once again, you can head on over to the rise up tour group.com. Take rise care up. of your membership. You rise want up. to make sure you use that promo code at the bottom OTF TF one time for the fan, right? And we want to uh, get you these swag bags that we're sending out. The one time for the fan giveaway, we are doing another giveaway on draft night so for everybody that won the original gifts Berto, collins uh raymond collins uh who else we had uh sterling woods carton bunch jordy shepherd uh cindy schwein grouper and diane markham uh your gift should be arriving shortly so where once everybody gets their gifts then draft night will be great we'll be able to do another one time for the fan giveaway it's a live draft party here We'll also be checking in with a couple of special guests, too, as well. We'll have some Falcon fans checking in with us. Scott Caristic already said he's going to be talking with us that night. Uh, Big Low Country Sports, he's going to be talking with us that night. I believe Eric Parker uh, will be checking in from the Benz uh, with us, too, as well. T will also be here. Chase, Dirty for Next United. I don't know if you guys have something going on, but if not, platform is also open. Smitty, Birdo, those guys are going to be chopping in, checking in. We're going to have some other special guests, too, as well. I've been reaching out to a lot of people who we can get on the podcast. Uh, Lisa Shepard, I know you uh, did a draft with us, draft party with us last year. If you want to jump in and talk some Falcons football with us, it would be great. But uh, we have some events coming up where fans, if you want to put on your Falcon gear and come out and rep the Atlanta Falcons against other fan groups yes chase other fan groups in our city yes sir cowboys fans packer fans 49er fans see i don't show them how we rip that hey baby they don't you got to understand falcon fans okay, when i chase. mentioned this tour the rise up tour it's a it's a real deal fan group right we're not talking about the falcons football where it's like we're talking about you know wide receiver and no we're a fan group where it's like this is a real deal travel fan group we go on the road to support the atlanta falcons in a major way when we have these uh fan tailgates pretty much all 32 teams has a fan group in this city for those that do not know the vikings have a fan group in the city the jets have a fan group in the city the packers the cowboys the 49ers the the the, give me a team give me a team the texans they all have fan groups in this city the Cowboys have a huge fan group in this they're city, everywhere. and they're everywhere. That's why you look at America's team, you look at the Cowboys too as well. Packers, 49ers, every single city, they have fan groups. Not groups that 
talk about the quarterback and Dak. And no, all they focus on is when the game is being played, they're going to show up and make a bunch of noise and piss off a bunch of people. And they're there by the thousands. Rise Up Tour is a group that we want everybody to be a part of. We have over a thousand people in our group in the Rise Up Tour. So for Falcon fans that want to be a part of something special, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And also head on over to the Rise Up Tour group. Take care of your membership. T. Will, training camp is coming up. We have some events going on for training camp that we can't uh, can't mention it now, but we can't wait to tell you all what's going to happen when training camp comes up. Right? We have some very exciting things I know Falcon fans are going to be wanting to be a part of. Um, but please... Do. Please come back for our first event that we're doing. It's draft night. We're having a live draft party here like we did the first two years and one time for the mm -hmm. fan. A live draft party. Uh, we'll be talking some Falcons football. Drake True Statement said Cowboys and Steelers are everywhere. Yes, there is a Steeler. Matter of fact, there's a Steeler bar right there in College Park. It says Steeler Country right there with the flags up and everything. There's a Steeler bar in College Park. And I'm guessing they're... Fan group goes and watch Steeler games there. There's right? a Buffalo Bills bar. Um, there is. Yeah, is here. Not, the, not the one near downtown. No, they're, they're, I think there are a couple here. Because I, I work with a guy who's a devout uh, Buffalo yeah. Bills fan. Yeah. I drove so. past something recently. I'm going to find out where it is. I drove past something recently where I saw Bill stuff everywhere. Yeah. All over this establishment, somewhere in the city. Um, but here goes Dre Shoe Statement said, My homeboy used to DJ for that bar. So, see, Falcon fans, there's there fan go. groups in your city. Now, these fan tailgates that's coming up, these fan groups are going to be there. We're going to have some food out there. We're going to have our tents. It's going to be hot. So, come on out. Bring your Falcons gear. Bring your Falcons friends and Falcons family. We'll probably be doing a live podcast from there, too, as well. But there's going to be fan groups from all 32 teams. So, we want to make sure we have enough Falcon fans there to represent. And the Rise Up Tour group, we're going to be deep. So, come on out. Have a good time with us. Um, also, big shout out to everybody that's going on our Rise Up Tour cruise. Chase, we have over 100 Falcon fans on our Rise Up Tour cruise. That's what's up. It's going down in a major way. So, Falcon fans, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. That's my shout outs for tonight. Terry, T. Will, what's your shout outs, brother? Hey, man, I want to thank God for waking me up. Uh, thank my family. Thank the wonderful fans we have here. Uh, you guys have embraced me, and I appreciate it. And, uh, hey, I got to thank Chase. Chase is always backing me up, man, always keeping me on the straight and narrow, narrow. Jack, I got to thank you, man, because, hey, I'm not here without you. So as long as you keep inviting me, I'll keep coming back. Looking forward to seeing you Friday morning after the Zags do what? Win, right? Yep. I, 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 wait. I, no, 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 no. That wasn't confident, Jack. <laughs> I didn't, exactly. I, you better put some. You they're better put some bass in your voice, their sir. Toughest game they've ever played. Hey, all now, I, 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 I want, look, 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 you don't care that, about them. Dunk on them. There you go. That's Swim what I'm talking again. about. That's what I'm talking game. about. I, man, I don't even talk about my basketball career. I scored 60 <laughs> one night. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> man, it was packed. <laughs> it was packed. Look, I then 60 you on them folks, man. Then you went out and threw 80 on the run. Same night. That was, a, it was a, the, day, the day, day after. Different day. The day. Okay. Okay. All right. I got you. I got you. Well, hey, man, I defer to you. Go ahead, sir. Falcon fans, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Google us. Friday morning, breakfast with one time for the fan. We'll be back. Any Falcons news and updates, we'll be there to talk about it. Um, I think this night deserves a... Uh, T-Will, you don't know about this. Chase, you know about this. Shit. I think this night deserves a, slow acoustic cinematic. <laughs> we get up out of here for the night. Get some sleep, y'all. One <laughs> time for the fan.